Good God morning. Good God morning. Let's stretch. Oh, gracious me. I tell you, it is very important for the body to get its sleep. Don't you think? I do. It is very important for the body to get eight hours of sleep. Oh, Lord, I tell you. I remember those days of all night work binging when I became sober and uh, focused in on doing my business, you know, creating websites and learning lessons and being in school, being able to stay all up all night motivated to do what I desire to get done for that day or that hour and Lord, and I could just function, you know? Ah, oh, but it doesn't seem to be working out that way. So I am a little tardy for today's lesson. Yes. Usually I come in at 6.30 every morning, and uh, except for Sunday. Sunday I don't do the morning feed because you're in contact or I am in contact with spirit, with community in such a fashion on Sundays, you know, I'm in church and uh, with a group group of people and it's a day of rest or it should be a day of rest, a day of intentional communication. And so it's Saturday for some people, some people go to church or, go to, or participate in church services on, on Saturdays. Hey, how are you, Brian? I've been looking at you, brother. How you like your mother's book? Your mother's passed, or did she give you those books to read? Are you learning a lot about your mother and who she is or was? I wish my mom had had the fortitude to do something like that. Journaling. Journaling is important and it leaves a message to everyone in your family, just as being live does. Oh, she let you. Really? She had nothing to hide, huh? Are you enjoying it? Is it giving you a good insight, Brian? I know it is. You probably may see some things or emotions that may be kind of the same. I think people go through pretty much the same kind of experiences as we grow up. They just happen to be in a different setting. So enjoy your mother's life. That's amazing. <laughs> Tell the truth and shame the devil. If I believed in the devil, you know, I believe that the devil is your mind. You know, your mind is the part that misleads you, misguides you. It doesn't always tell you the truth because it's ego-based. It's I, I, I-based. So everything that you hear or see it's never the real truth with the capital T. Hi, Howard, how are you? Life is good and all is well. Life is good and all is well. Howard, meet Brian. Brian is a Facebook friend of mine. Howard is an alumni and a cousin. <laughs> yes, because he has my grandmom's last name. So we got to be connected in some form of, of, um, of uh, some kind of way along the line. We're all connected. We're all cousins, you know. If the truth be told, we all come from the same bone and because we are God's children. That keeps us connected. Good morning, Cornell. How are you? I have got to touch base with you. Um, life is amazing. It is more than uh, 
It's more than amazing. Sometimes I think there's no word to express how I feel about life today. Oh, God, there is no way. Yes, right. I love it. God is with me everywhere I go. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I, you know, I. there is nothing wrong with the world. Nothing. And perception is how I see the world. And it doesn't necessarily mean that that's the truth. There's a bigger truth beyond everything. And so today we're going to kind of, re, we are reviewing, we're in the review mode of the lessons in A Course in Miracles. And of course, A Course in Miracles um, can bring up some angst and anxieties of things that you really are not sure of. You still have a question about them, but in reality, there is no question, you know, you I, I must ask to see the truth. I must believe that everything I see is not so. No matter how good or bad I might see it as, you know. I'm sure folks had all kinds of had had all kinds of anxieties about the great misconceptions of the world, the great hypocrisies, the tragic death of deaths of people and community. We get angry about all of that, about the slavery situation, about the uh, Holocaust, about the Indians, about all these people. But there's a truth that lies behind that truth. And we don't judge. And the lessons of Course in Miracles teaches me to keep a level head about the things that I think, the things that I say, how I react to the world. And the more that I, more I do, do these lessons, the more I read it, the better I get in navigating in a godly fashion throughout this world. It's not hard, but it can be a little difficult, a little ego-based, a little anxieties and all of that. But we must remember that there's a bigger plan beyond our recognition, beyond what we can see. And in fact, when you get right into it, just put a put a put a put a thumbtack in this thought. Every thoughts in mind produce in kind. If the whole society sees something as a way of life and believe it, it manifests on earth. Just hold on to that thought. If we're all thinking the same thing, then it's gonna work out that way. Um, there are things that were not bad for us or not seen in the medical system as a trait um and somebody gave it a name example there was a time when there was no such thing as cancer in our world because in reality we have all these cells in our bodies and we actually have that cell in our body however for a long time it didn't grow. And then all of somebody, all of a sudden, someone named that disease. And fear set in, as it should. Fear came in. And so man believes that now cancer will kill you, perhaps. But there are a lot of people who have had the dis-ease of types of cancers and have healed. Some with medication from doctors and some with medications from God. See, I kind of believe, and I know I'm not, let me erase that. I believe that there are things 
that we can heal ourselves by healing our consciousness. But that's just me. That's that's just who I am. I remember having a toothache, and I don't know why I'm getting into this. I'm late, right? <laughs> Anybody had this ever had this issue? Um, Denise, I have a bunch of men on here. Dennis, is that you? I can't, you know, I am working on my eyesight, right? Okay, let me get back to you. So I used to have these uh, two things. And God said you can heal yourself. And he'll be your doctor. And I used to put my hand on my chin. And I said, you know what, God, you said that you are my healer. Take this pain away. You know what I got to do. I got to talk. I got to teach. I got to do it. You know, if you, I don't know, the pain would just go away. I really believe this. I believe that we can speak things into existence. Sometimes good things, sometimes bad things. It just is that way. So I, um, you know, God is amazing. I, spirit that fills me sometimes breaks me down to tears of happiness. In my darkest hour, I am reminded in some form or fashion how powerful the spirit is. So anyway, that's just me and that's my experiences today. I, I guess I was always, someone told me, I remember meeting this guy that I was a medicine root woman. I often wonder if I go to one of those people that tell not just the future, but past lives, what they would tell me. I haven't done that yet. The spirit tells me um, I am a woman of great faith and give gratitude for this. And so it brings me to why I do what I do, which is share every morning and let me get down to what we're sharing today. Remember the lessons. I do this because my calling is to share what I have learned to expand myself with others. And the easy way about it is I didn't really have to do anything to change. All I had to do was repeat statements without judgment. Just repeat them. So that's what the Course in Miracles does. And of course, you could actually go and get the book and read the lessons in a deeper thing. Yes. So um, let's go on. And I want to thank everyone for joining. I want to thank everyone for sharing this. Someone in your circle may need to understand or need comfort. Because when I say these things, they comfort me. They keep me going. So let's go. Too much, too much conversation, right? So I think. Okay, so lessons we're studying today are lessons six through 10. Remember, there are 365 of these lessons and we've only gone through the first 50. So first lesson, close your eyes as I repeat this. I am upset because I see what is not there. I am upset because I see what is not there. I am upset because what I see is not there. Reality is never frightening. 
it is impossible that it could upset me. It is impossible that it could upset me. Reality brings only perfect peace. When I am upset, it is because I have replaced reality with illusions. I made it up. The illusions are upsetting me because I have given them reality and thus regard reality as an illusion. Nothing in God's creation is affected by any way by the confusion of the mind. I am always upset by nothing. Remember, nothing I see means anything. Nothing I think means anything. It's all an illusion. It's all something we have named. Reality, God's reality, is always perfect peace. I know your mind is about to tell me some things like, oh, but that's da 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 No. Keep it simple. What's that kiss? Don't even try to analyze it right now. Just remember. I am upset because I see what is not there. I guess I could give you an example. Most people are upset in relationships because they may spot their other being, their other, their mate in a situation that they don't like. I can actually take this to a personal level. <laughs> and this is about relationships. I'm going to go back to college. So, um, you know, jealousy is a, an evil thing. Jealousy is a thing that will hurt you. Being in love can be painful at times. But that's an illusion because love has no pain. It's the, what, it's the idea that we want to have what we have and you cannot possess another person, period. You can't. There's nothing I can do with or to another person because it's all about me. So you're walking down the street, and I was walking down the street, and my boyfriend was eating lunch with this beautiful woman. They're holding hands, and I immediately get into an outrage. What I see, I am upset because I see what is not there. What I see in my mind is he's with another woman. She's, they're sleeping together. They're hanging out together. They're in love. What I see, I'm upset because I see what is not there. There's no sign saying, oh, they're lovers. However, their actions in my mind say they are. So I'm take it, it takes away from who we are. That's not true. Love is one of those things that is so huge. The idea is when others lose or choose to disrespect each other. So now you breathe. You, well, what I would do is probably go up and introduce myself and let the cookies lie or let folks do what they do in that situation. But of course, that might cause a lot of chaos in public because not everyone is where you are. 
So how would you handle that? I didn't handle it too well. I didn't make a, 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 I pretty much made a scene. I think I would handle it differently today. I think I would handle it differently today. I might even be bold enough to invite her to dinner. <laughs> Just to see what's going on. Because if you can handle two women or I can handle two men, I must be a bad person. I mean, and I don't mean bad as an attitude. I mean, um, free enough to share love without hurting others. That's kind of difficult. That's kind of different. difficult to um, do that. Or it may be a little trying, but it can be done. You have people that are in all kinds of relationships, and some of them work well. But anyway, remember, I am upset because I see what is not there. I see what is not there. I see a whole lot of make-up stories that's not there. Number seven, I see only the past. Mm. What I saw a minute ago is the past. What I feel about that relationship is the past. So I see only the past. As I look about, I condemn the world I look upon. I call this scene. I hold the past against everyone and everything, making them my enemy. When I have forgiven myself and remembered who I am, I will bless everyone and everything I see. There will be no ups, no past, and therefore no enemies. And I will look with love at all that I failed to see before, like my story. All of that is in the past. And when you start thinking about things of how you, when you're presented with a situation, your feelings from situ past situations will come up and attach themselves to what's happening right now. If you allow it. If you allow it. I know when I was being coached and learning of, um, in life coach, in my life coaching class, the question would always be, when do do when can can you re, when can you remember the first time you felt like this in your life? What experience that you went through gave you this feeling? That's I see only the past. I bring up emotions from the past, past experience. And if I realize who I am, a new day, a new person, learning new things, giving God strength and power and surrendering to his love of everything and everybody, I can give it up. I can live in peace. I can express love in every situation. Again, I bring up Ayana's book, Get Over It. <laughs> I love that book. I love that book. As I do uh, forgiving everything, everybody for everything. Forgiveness book. The Course in the Miracles is an amazing lesson that must take practice must take saying these, these statements with conviction. We have, I desire to be and show who I really am, the daughter, the son of God, the image and likeness of God, the being of God, living in peace and love and harmony, and all it takes is confirming and affirming these statements over and over again. When I am in a situation where God needs to take over, 
I must surrender by saying these statements. So statement number nine at eight, my mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. I see only my thoughts and my mind is preoccupied with the past. Can you get with that? What then can I see as it is? What then can I see as it is? <laughs> That's a heavy question. Let me remember that I look up on the past to prevent the present from dawning on my mind. Oh, that's a heavy statement. I'm keeping it from me. I stay in the past because I do not desire enlightenment. I do not want to truly see that subconscious still wants to hold on. Let me understand that I am trying to use time against God. Time doesn't mean anything. Let me learn to give the past away. Realize that in so doing, I am giving up nothing. Not a thing. It almost makes my heart get overwhelmed. I do not want to, to be preoccupied with past thoughts and past emotions. It's done. Let it go. Enjoy life. God is so amazing. God is so amazing. Oh, we're running time. We're running time. And we're just on number eight. Number nine, I see nothing as it is now. I really don't see the present. Didn't we just say the mind is preoccupied with past thoughts, past situations? If I see nothing as it, as it is now, it can truly be said that I see nothing. I can see only what is now. The choice is not whether to... See the past or the present. The choice is merely whether it to see or not to see. No distinction between past and present. It's a distinction of whether I want to 